Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. So we are almost at the end of the week number seven of this NPTEL course and we are well underway into designing algorithms that can drive autonomous systems such as the satellite orbiting the earth that we see in our background. Uh, so what we were looking at uh, last time was a, a new uh, sort of topic on design of adaptive controller in the case of unknown control games. Okay, so, um, so the design procedure was more or less similar. Right. The only difference being that there was a gain attached to the controller, which was not the case uh, in all the adaptive designs we saw earlier, right? And uh, we, of course, had the usual tracking objective right, that we take, and then we made some pretty reasonable assumptions on this boundedness of the function f and b being non-zero, which is essentially translates to controllability of the system. Um, with the error dynamics in place in the form of equation 1.3 here, uh, we started to do our design by actually applying some nice little tricks so that um, we redefined the parameters of the system into theta 1 star and theta 2 star, starting from A and B, right? And we, of course, designed the known controller. From this, we uh, actually move to the unknown controllers simply using the certainty equivalence principle of replacing the unknowns with their estimates right and we started with our Lyapunov analysis with this new control design right now we started with a standard Lyapunov function which involves taking the known case Lyapunov function and adding quadratic terms corresponding to the unknown parameter. But we quickly realized that this leads us to the uh, non-implementability issue where the unknown parameter itself starts to appear in the update law, right? So which is absolutely not allowed because that is essentially what we are trying to compensate for. Yeah, so we tried a different Lyapunov function, which is of course well known in literature, and we simply added an absolute value of b in the Lyapunov function. And what we saw was instead of the parameter itself appearing in the update law, the sign of the parameter appears in the update law, which leads us to an additional uh, requirement uh, for adaptive control for unknown control gain systems. Uh, and this requirement is that we need information of, uh, I apologize, we need information of the sign of P. All right, so this is sort of a critical requirement which we cannot do without when we are looking at um, unknown control gain problems, right? So, as I mentioned, if there is a solution that one of you can find which does not require us to uh, use the signum or the sign of b then you would have done something exceptional right and um well um as of now it seems impossible is what i would say is how i would put it okay uh, now we of course can we get a negative semi-definite uh, v dot and we can complete the proof using standard signal chasing in Bablat's lemma corollary type arguments. Um, of course, remember that in order to complete the signal chasing arguments, we need boundedness of various quantities. And this is where uh, the boundedness of, of F required. Yeah. 
So the boundedness of F will be required in order to complete these signal chasing arguments. All right. So this is where it gets applied. Although we stated the assumption and we solved the whole problem without seeming to require it, but that's not true. When you try to do the signal chasing arg argument with complete diligence, specifically when you try to prove that E dot is in fact a bounded, yeah, you will need the boundedness of this function. All right. So it's not like we made a, a frivolous assumption. We will need to use this assumption, okay, in order to complete this proof. So I do uh, recommend that you uh, complete this proof. Yeah, I do recommend strongly that you complete this proof so that you can uh, understand sort of you know, what kind of uh, assumptions go into the completing the proof. Yeah. All right. So now that we have, um, you know, completed this discussion on the unknown control gain and we've already done the uh, you know problem of um, unknowns in the drift vector field or the unknowns that are connected to the states uh, we are ready to look at this generic model reference adaptive control problem for linear systems right so this is where we uh, will begin today so i will mark it as a lecture Seven point six. All right, and market is lecture seven point six. Uh, so, what is model reference adaptive control? This is a paradigm, if you may, in adaptive control, and a rather uh, you know important and and uh, and occupies a very large place in adaptive control literature. Yeah. So the idea is, I start with a linear system which is x dot is ax plus bu. So I hope all of you have seen linear system models such as these, yeah. And of course, now we are dealing with vectors. We're no longer looking at simplifying or well, not necessarily simplifying, but you know, scalar systems and double integrators and thing. We are looking at a linear system, first of all. We're not looking at non-linearity. There's no fxt, but we are looking at a vector state, x and rn control is in rm so the dimension of the control is possibly smaller than the dimension of the state and of course you have this x dot is ax plus bu so not necessarily double integrator or anything like that okay great so here uh, instead of x trying to follow some r right so that's the typical thing right x following r or x goes to r as time goes to infinity is what we have been uh, looking at until now so instead of that what we say is x has to follow xm and xm is generated as an output of a reference model all right so xm is coming out of a differential equation okay or as an output of a reference model yeah so physically you can think of there being a reference model in which there's an input signal and there's an output and your system output is sort of tracking this all right so if i well, let me see if i can if you want to think of it as a block diagram let me see how this will be so usually you have a reference here so this will be uh, let me make this bigger first so usually I will have a reference here, right? And then I will have some kind of a control block here. Okay. Um, then I'll have a plant block here. All right. And then I'll have something like an output, I suppose right and this output of course feeds back well actually not this output but typically you will have this going here yeah and of course, because this is an adaptive controller, there will be an adaptation block, right, which will also take this input. 
yeah and possibly also this input and the output from this goes here okay so and here something more complex happens you have an input system and there is an R right so this is basically the the reference plant right so this is something like uh, a reference plant I would probably write it here governed by AM BM so this is the reference right uh, this is the XM with the plus minus here right and then you have something like a control here u right and then you have the plant here which is given by a b is the plant itself you have the adaptive block which is a hat b hat if i may it's crude it's a crude form but this is how it will look all right so this is like a how this adaptive control block will look because the plant matrices a b are also not known so i'll create an adaptive law for that that will also feed into the control then there's a reference system which takes in a reference r and outputs what the system needs to track which is this x sub n all right and then all of it comes together to give you the control and the control then of course feeds into this guy okay so that's how this model reference adaptive control uh, log diagram will look like yeah so that's the big difference here yeah? and of course as usual we assume that this reference input is bounded and smooth and all that stuff okay we also assume there are several assumptions maybe i should mark them so bounded and smooth this am is assumed to be hurwitz so basically for the reference system it has to be a stable reference system so a, the matrix am is a hurwitz matrix a n and b m are assumed to be known and the same dimensions as a and b okay so um, and of course a b are unknown constant matrices okay so a and b are assumed to be unknown so these are the quantities that are not known so this linear system is essentially unknown and you're trying to figure out what this linear system is or at least you're trying to compensate for the fact that you do not know this linear system okay so you literally do not know this linear system but of course there are a few other assumptions i mean we will come to the assumptions yeah so but the but these are the assumptions on the reference system yeah so anything that you want to track has to take as input a nice bounded smooth signal so this is just standard assumption again to ensure that the reference uh, signal that or the xm that you're trying to match comes out to be a nice enough signal okay and then of course we assume that am is a hurwitz matrix which ensures again stability of the whole system so there's a bounded input hurwitz matrix so output will also be bounded okay this is standard and well known result in linear systems that if you have a stable system which is perturbed by some bounded input then the output is also going to be bounded all right so that's what we get all right great so now what we want to do is drive x to xm and we do not know matrices a and b okay now the question is well actually the first question that we ask is what kind of assumptions are required yeah so we've already uh, put in several assumptions on the reference but we also need assumptions on a and b or the original system for that matter yeah and so what are these assumptions these assumptions are of course um, called the matching conditions in model reference adaptive control you're already used to matching conditions that is when you want x1 to track r you want x2 to track r dot in a double integrator system right so this is also a matching condition so we have such uh, similar matching conditions here the first is 
that the pair AB has to be controllable. This is not exactly a matching condition, but we are clubbing it loosely under matching conditions. Yeah, because if the pair AB is not controllable, there is no scope of designing controllers for the system. Okay, so this is more like a necessary condition for us to be able to do any control problem or solve any control problem. Okay, so the first is AB has to be a controllable pair. This implies that if I'm given any matrix P, in n by n or n by n matrix p there must exist a matrix k such that a minus b k equals p okay so what does it mean so a minus b k is coming how so this is when u is chosen to be minus k x right which means that so controllability as you would already know i hope if you don't i really really urge you to go back and revise what is controllability for a linear state space system right so what it means is that if a b is a controllable pair then given any matrix p such that i want the system uh, to look like x dot equals p x then i can choose i should be able to find a k in k such that u equals minus k x does the job so if i put u equals minus k x this becomes a minus b k x right and so i have my desired system okay and now notice that uh, what we try to match are not the matrices themselves okay so notice very carefully that this assumption does not guarantee that the matrices a minus bk and p match no they just ensure that the eigenvalues of the two matrices match okay so this is called standard pole placement if you may i mean this is i would say called pole placement or in time domain it's called eigenvalue assignment okay this is called pole placement or eigenvalue assignment what it means is we are not really going to be able to match two matrices yeah but what we so the, not every entry of the matrix might match but what matches is the eigenvalues of the matrices okay so this is called pole placement or eigenvalue assignment so this is possible whenever a and b are a controllable pair if you do not know what is controllable pair please go and revise right great so that's the first condition great so now um, the next assumption actually makes this uh, sort of more stringent it says that there exists a k star again an n by n matrix now, let's see yeah there exists a k star an n by n matrix such that a minus b k star is exactly equal to a m okay so now we have made it stringent right so this is where it is different from point because uh, point a1 because we are not just saying that the eigenvalues are matching no we are actually saying that the two matrices match okay now uh, there is much to be said about uh, the assumptions that we are making they are uh, restrictive in several scenarios and one might ask why should uh, it makes it's pretty reasonable to say that ab is a controllable pair because without that control is not possible and therefore that eigenvalues of these two match very reasonable because we already said am is hurwitz i can do any pole placement if ab is a controllable pair Therefore, matching the eigenvalues of these uh, is obvious, right? So, matching of eigenvalues of both is obvious from assumption A1. Right? It's obvious from assumption A1. Okay, but we are talking about something more. So now why um, a lot of times we are uh, okay with 
this assumption A2 is we somehow say that um, we have flexibility in choosing AM a lot of times. Okay, because we are we are not uh, you know always specifying AM very stringently. Yeah, uh, the user or or the designer, uh, sorry, the user may not specify AM that strictly because in most cases we are interested in uh, pole placement only and not this AM matrix itself. So um, it's very possible that you will be able to choose AM such that the eigenvalues are consistent with what the user wants, but uh, it also ensures this kind of a matching happens. Okay, so sort of a justification for this assumption. Okay, we are not saying that this is you know without any flaws or anything. These assumptions have a lot of flaws, but again, these are the only conditions under which solutions exist. Okay, so what is the justification? It's that flexibility in choosing AM exists in real problems. Okay, more often than not, there is flexibility in choosing the same. Okay, yeah, and that is why such a condition may be digested. All right, may be digested is what I would say. Yeah, uh, otherwise, it's not. Okay, all right. So, let's look at the next one. Right, uh, the next assumption A3 requires the existence of an L star such that VL star is equal to BM. All right. Now, now again, remember that because I do not know A, I cannot have a knowledge of K star. I hope that's evident. Okay. So what we are doing by this trick is actually again uh, redesign or, or reformulating our parameters. We are going to move from parameter A to parameter K star. Okay. So that's the idea. So we don't know A or B in fact. So we don't know K star actually. Okay, so let's sort of, I, I hope that's evident. Right, great, great. So now, uh, this next assumption is something again, similar or along same lines. It says BL star has to be equal to BM. So there should exist a L star such that BL star equals BM. Okay, so again, the justification is similar. And it is that there is a flexibility in choosing bn all right there is some flexibility in choosing bn so um, yes these assumptions are uh, to be taken with a pinch of salt yes i agree that these assumptions are very restrictive but these are the sort of justifications under which we operate yeah in fact uh, without this Again, solving model reference adaptive control problems is impossible. Okay, not known. Yeah, without these assumptions. So, so this is uh, sort of what uh, are the restrictive or the restrictions of the solution that we can provide. Okay. So, uh, so the other, so another part of assumption three is also that L star has to be symmetric and sign definite. So, another part of the assumption is like L star is to be symmetric and sign definite. So, the way to think about this on top of talking about flexibility in choosing BM is that somehow we are saying that BM is the has similar definiteness properties as B. All right. So, if I multiply B by, for example, a positive definite matrix L star on the right hand side and I get a BM which has no specific properties or anything because BM is not required to have any specific properties. Then uh, if you think about it, then uh, this is almost uh, might be identical to, um, you know, doing um, some kind of a nice uh, group operation on B itself. Okay. So 
so there is uh, if i just think of a very simple or the simplest situation okay let's think of a simplest situation uh, where let's see simplest situation okay let's think of uh, l star as some epsilon identity okay some epsilon scale to with identity very simple situation so what is bm going to be it is going to be epsilon b okay it's going to be epsilon b okay so this is the sort of um, again the argument which um, gives us some hope that this kind of an equality can also be justified right so so if l star is very close to the identity matrix then bm is almost uh, similar to b itself but again remember bm and am are known while b and a are unknown okay all right and also remember that in typical adaptive control we do not claim anything about uh, being able to uh, identify the parameters exactly or uniquely yeah we only claim to be able to compensate it and guarantee tracking okay so we have created we have made these assumptions right which are suitable for us to do this model reference adaptive control design and we'll go on to do a design and of course we'll prove some kind of a tracking of x with xm so x goes to xm is what we'll prove as methodically right but of course we'll not be able to claim that k goes to k k star or l goes to l star because our new parameters become this k star and l star right so these become our new parameters right and um, we will sort of compensate for the effects of this of not knowing this k star and l star Okay, so that is essentially what will happen, um, and of course we assume that L star is symmetric and sign definite also. So it's more assumption on this L star. So several assumptions, and on top of this, just like the scalar case in assumption four, right? Uh, we also claim that we know signum L star. Okay, remember in the scalar case we required the sign of B to be known. So L star here actually serves like sign. I mean, serves uh, to quantify the same thing. So we require the signum of L star. And what is signum of L star? Because L star is a matrix, correct? So what is the signum of a matrix? That's defined here. It's defined as plus one if the matrix is positive definite, and it is defined as negative one if the matrix is negative definite. All right. So these are the sort of assumptions we have. I mean, I just wanted to start off uh, this session with trying to understand the assumptions. Yeah. Uh, first, we have the controllability assumption. Then we have the assumption on A and AM matching via this condition. Then we have a B and BM matching via this condition. Not just that, the matching matrix has to be symmetric and sign definite. And further, we also require to know the sign of this matching matrix. All right. So, so that's it. So, what we saw today is essentially uh, a sort of a setup of the model reference adaptive control problem, which is one of the most uh, popular and famous and uh, occupies a large space in adaptive control literature. A lot of adaptive control literature. Uh, has developed around model reference adaptive control and uh, we just saw the setup we just saw the assumptions today yeah in this session and what we plan to do in subsequent sessions is to analyze and design adaptive controllers for this system we also understand we take everything with a pinch of salt we understand that uh, these assumptions may not always hold but we also understand that adaptive control is not going to actually identify the parameters in several situations but simply try to compensate for these unknowns so in spite of the fact that these assumptions may not always be validated in several circumstances they these kind of model reference adaptive controllers work very well 
in fact uh, they have been uh, flight tested on uh, you know uh, fighter jets so they have been functioning rather well for several decades now and they actually give good real performance and one of the few non-linear controllers which have actually been implemented in the industry great uh, so this is where we stop today and we'll continue again in the subsequent session thank you